Let's begin with electricity. The Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission has listed six states that are now authorized to regulate their respective electricity markets after the transfer of regulatory authority from the NERC, Electricity Regulatory Commission. So those six states, Enugu, Ekiti, Ondo, Imo, Oyo, and Edo State. Now they have set up electricity regulatory agencies and will be regulating the electricity market in their respective states. We're going to talk about the implications of that. Still on electricity, Nigeria's federal government, through the Bureau of Public Enterprise and Distribution Companies, has signed a contract agreement with a consortium of Chinese companies to deliver 1.4 million prepaid meters across the country. As you can see, we have a 7.1 million meter prepaid gap. Now, the consortium is Ningbo Saxon Medical and Electric Company, Ningbo Saxon Star Electricity Company Limited, Messrs XJ Group Corporation. Now, the agreement is a step in the direction of closing that 7.1 million prepaid meter gap. The project is part of the distribution sector recovery program funded by the World Bank's $500 million facility through the investment project finance arrangement. We spoke with Odion Omofoman, who is the CEO of New Hampshire Capital Limited. He's also an advisor to the Nigerian Governors Forum. The first question I asked him was, hey, why are we using Chinese companies to scale meters across the country? Why not use indigenous Nigerian companies? Here is our conversation. Well, we have meter assemblers. I think I've been on this program before, and I've said we have meter assemblers. So most of the components are procured from China and then assembled here either as a SKD or CKDs, right? So it makes sense if you're doing bulk procurement in that quantity, you may as well go straight to the Chinese manufacturers. But the other thing is that the World Bank procurement process, this was an international uh, tender. So it was open to everybody in the globe to come advertise because at the end of the day, it's a World Bank facility. The World Bank will do the international tender. There's a second bid coming up or that just concluded for the local tenders or the local assemblers as well. But this was an international procurement, and then obviously the Chinese have the better or the upper hand in, in, in these things in terms of price, getting the best pricing and also the best um, uh, uh, quality of meters in the country. Now, um, when speaking of meters, you know, looking at that, that, that list there of the, um, of the, the announcements, the gap is 7.1 million meters. So. Could, you know, considering how clo how big the gap is, couldn't this? The, if, what's your reaction to one that asks? If a question is asked to you, why couldn't this all have been done in one fell swoop rather than 1.4 million at, at first? First of all, uh, the, the gap that we claim we have, 7.1 million, is is totally very wrong mm. um, because you're working with the existing data. I can tell you for free. Look around you; there are new houses being built every day. I uh, also am working with the Edo State government. The Edo State government is doing the um, Edo State mass metering program. And we're already seeing customers that do not have any account with the utility at all coming forward. So 7.1 is an understatement of the true metering gap we have. But to your core question, why not just close everything at once? First is funding. 1.4 million meters will procure, you would use, five, uh, it's about uh, one point, it's about $157 million. So you need roughly about a billion dollars to close the wow. metering gap. Uh, I know besides the World Bank facility, uh, we have what you call the Presidential Metering Initiative that also wants to raise funding. States, the federal government, states and local government, they've been debited about, uh, they've pulled together about 220 billion naira to fund about 2 million meters in addition to this 1.4 million meters being funded. Uh, they intend to raise about 700 billion over the next three years to close that out. So, a combination of that hopefully will address this understated number. But I can tell you, we're always going to have metering gaps. We will have it will not close the metering gap, unfortunately, because we have a lot of customers who are being who are joining the system. Customer growth is projected at nine percent every year, year on year. Beyond that, you also have meters that will go bad. That will be obsolete or will, you know so you you I, I don't know how you're going to close the gap i think beyond just borrowing and debiting or getting funding from states and from the federation accounts i think there has to be a lot more uh a more ingenious financing structure so that we do not have metering gaps open up in the next five years after this okay well thanks for mentioning the presidential metering initiative so we've got this this pmi chart that shows where they are trying to go and one of the um you know goals on that pmi chart is that 
they want to close the metering gap in two to three years. So based on what you said now, yeah, so there it is. Uh, okay, we're talking about 55% of 30 million registered electricity. So number two, yeah, the PMI aims to spend approximately 700 billion to deploy 7 million end user prepaid meters. And to, in fact, point one, excuse me, is where it is. They've closed the metering gap in two to three years. Can that, can that be achieved then? Based they on what- close the 7 million gap, but that won't close the metering gap. Ah. The metering gap is way above 7 million. And besides, in three years' time, you've got meters that were installed 2016. Meters have a lifespan of maximum 10 years. They would expire. So as you're closing, more is opening. Right. So the point is, you can't say you want to close it because you're saying there will be no new customers added to the networks. That's not true. That's not going to happen. Gotcha. Um, I want to move to the, um, the six states um, that have been authorized by the Electricity Regulatory Commission to I guess, regulates their, their own markets. What, what do you make of that announcement? So I guess Enugu, Ekiti, Ondo, Imo, Oyo, Edo states. Um, I guess, are these states ahead of the others in terms of the curve? Yes, these states are ahead of the others. And let me first start by um, applauding NEC for being very, um, very, very uh, uh, responsive to states who say, look, we've met the conditions stated under the Electricity Act. Uh, he said, too, we, there was this apprehension that NEC may not concede to states, but we're, uh, we've been very pleased with NEC's response so far, NEC's support. So let me use this to op op openly congratulate or appreciate NEC. But these states are ahead, and that means that, for instance, now Enugu State, Ondo and Ekiti, by October, they will start fully regulating their market. NEC, NEC will have no say in their electricity markets. Edo states, Imo, Edo or Yo and Co, by February next year, they will fully uh, have total control of their markets. Uh, more states are built to join. I consult as I consult for the Nigerian Governors Forum, and I know for a fact that more states are in the next couple of weeks, months, you would have more states join the six states. Great. So NERC has a, a video of this. They, they tweeted it out, listing those those states. Um, so what, what's taking so long for the others? What, what's the process like? NERC, what, what does NERC have to do to? So, so NERC doesn't really have to do anything. It's okay. actually the states that need to move on this. So the first things first is they need to make the electricity law first within their state, have that passed by the House, signed by the governor, and then, you know, they also need to then set up the Electricity Regulatory Commission. Having done those two, all they now need to do is tell NEC, we've done these two things. Transition, send us a transition order. That transition order is for six months, will expire six months. So within that six months, there are a couple of steps that need to happen where that state electricity market needs a bit of reorganization particularly with the existing licenses of NERC, who then would then become licenses of the state. You know, so it's a transition process where, where NERC pretty much pretends the whole transition to make sure that by the time it officially hands over to the state's regulatory uh, commission, uh, they are fully ready to take over the market within your state. Fantastic. So, so, so after, so what happens next? Do the, do the states now have to attract investments to, you know, to try to provide electricity, what's the next step after well, you? I can tell you for free, a lot of these six states are already receiving investors really? who really want to come in and participate. We always think that investors want to do the billions of dollars and may, hundreds of millions. There are investors that just want to do $10 million or even less, even in local currency. So we see, again, sitting from the Nigerian Governors Forum Secretariat, we already seen investors coming to say they want to do it. But the core of it, the, in next six months, let's take a state that just got theirs last uh, week or thereabouts. Uh, the existing utility in the state, the distribution licensee, would have to create a subsidiary company uh, that will be licensed by the state, right? So that there's a legal process that they need to do. Then the other steps will be, you cover four states. What are the assets and liabilities that are relevant to that state? Because then that will translate to what is uh, the, the, the regulated asset base of that utility. Other entities that are licensed by NEC or previously licensed by NEC, like the mini grid operators, would then have to come to the state and get a license to operate within the state. By the way, this does not cover generation companies that generate and put into the national grid. They don't need to do all that. But if your operations wholly are within the state's territories, then you would have to go to the state and get license. On the part of the state, what they need to do is make sure their regulatory team commissions are properly set up, you have trained staff, and they start to look at the existing regulations they can adapt or adopt 
and then use that to regulate their markets. But suffice to say, you won't see more changes in terms of regulations because I know a lot of the states will take what NERC has done and adapt it to their peculiar use. But let me say these investors are really keen on state electricity markets. We're seeing a lot of them coming and hopefully that will be part of the push we see in making sure we have some form of reliable electricity in, in Nigeria. You've, uh, you've prepped my question. So all this sounds very encouraging. You know, at the federal level, you have procuring meters to try to get uh, to scale across the country. At the state level, you know, having the states take over their own regulation, their own markets, and doing their own pricing. So someone comes to you and says, you know, Mr. Odeon, you know, will I, what needs to happen for me to see, you know, regular electricity? Are we decentralizing this down to the states? Well, what's, what's, how, how do we see well, the promised land? The, the, the promised land is, is very near for some states. Um, perhaps, but if you save Nigeria as a country, hard one, uh, not anytime soon. But states that are now taking the actions to create their markets, I would say within the next five years, even shorter, some of the states will see a lot of reliable power. I know there's a lot of spending by the federal government in billions of dollars to improve the sector. But like I said, you can, electricity distribution is a local affair until you get the state government and even the municipalities, local governments involved. Very, it's, it's going to be hard to say Nigeria, all parts of Nigeria will experience reliable 24-hour power. But I know some states are already on that track. I hope in the next five, six years, some states will literally have that all uh, figured out. What about the matter of aging infrastructure and all, all, all those other things? The investment should cover that? Or? Yeah, so, so the, on the national grid, Aging infrastructure, I know the, 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 the federal government, FGN power company, they're working on rehabilitation of it, but it would take a lot of um, resources, financial resources. But the other part is we are now seeing increased vandalism of the national grid. So when you plug that into it, you then realize that even though there might be a commitment to solve our power problems, you then find out that you have a situation whereby you have people sabotaging the grid such that we will never experience uh, reliable power. So that's why state electricity markets are, usually, are actually uh, have become more important because then you have localized grids, not grids that some terrorist in the Northeast will blow up or some bandits or some people will pull down because they just want to harvest the, the aluminum so that they can go and smelt it and make spoons and hangers. That's how bad it is here, yeah. where people pull copper wires just to go and smelt and make something cheap. Right, it's a multi-billion-dollar infrastructure, and then people just go vandalize it for the sake of making some cobble out of it, mm. and we're all in darkness. Gotcha. All right, final final question for you. I guess just holistically, electricity in Nigeria. Are you optimistic, cautiously optimistic, or pessimistic? How are you seeing things? Extremely it? optimistic because of the fact that you now have the government closest to the people now involved in this business. Distribu electricity distribution, as, as far as I'm concerned, has always been where the issues have been. You cannot do electricity distribution from Abuja. It is a local affair. So now that the state governments are now in it, and then with the autonomy grant, financial autonomy grant at the local government, you now see a lot of local governments who would also put resources. As simple, as something small as a transformer might be all you need that is preventing you from 24 hour power. So that investment can be done by the local government or private sector players operating within that entity. We don't need somebody to make a phone call to Abuja, get approval, and then do a transformer that will take five, six years. All right. So I'm extremely optimistic because states are now in the business, or states are now getting into the business. And that will change uh, the investment trajectory and, and service quality that we, that, that we knew it before.